Hi, I'm Joanne and this is Rocket Boom. Today, Jacob Soboroff of Why Tuesday talks to Ed Felton of Princeton University on the state of electronic voting systems. What's going on, everybody? It's Jacob Soboroff for Why Tuesday coming to you today from Los Angeles, California. And today we are joined by Ed Felton, professor of computer science and public affairs at Princeton University. And he's the founding director of Princeton Center for Information Technology Policy. He was the lead computer science expert witness for the Department of Justice in the Microsoft antitrust case. He's testified before the Senate Commerce Committee on Digital Television Technology and Regulation and before the House Administration Committee on Electronic Voting. Now we're voting on computers more than ever. What's the ideal computer, or what's the ideal voting system? Maybe without computers, with computers, I don't know. Well, I think computers do have something to bring to the table. A computerized interface can be easier to use. It can be clearer. It can be presented with large print or in multiple languages. It can have audio. Uh, it can help you catch errors. But the danger is that, is that computers often get things wrong. They mess up. They crash. Um, and, and they don't offer much transparency. You can't really look at the computer and know whether it's doing the right thing. All you can do is trust it to tell you when something goes wrong. Hmm. The starting point for making these systems safer is to have some kind of paper record of each ballot, which the voter himself or herself could look at and verify that it says what they want it to say. After the Super Tuesday primary in your home state of New Jersey, you seem to have noticed uh, some discrepancy with information that's come out of, of polling places. New Jersey had its presidential primary on February 5th, Super Tuesday, and um, after the election, um, one of the county clerks actually noticed that there was a weird discrepancy on a paper tape that got printed out by one of the voting machines in her, in her county. At the end of the day, when the poll workers closed the polls, the machines print out a paper tape that says how many votes for each candidate and um, also how many uh, voters there were in each political party. The numbers didn't add up. Um, on one of the tapes, for example, if you add up the number of votes for all the Republican candidates, it comes to 61. And yet the same voting machine that tells you that tells you on the same paper tape that only 60 Republican voters um, showed up that day. Hmm. Uh, so something doesn't add up. She then went and looked at other machines in her county and found nine machines in the county. And other county clerks went and looked. There's about 60 voting machines in New Jersey that had this weird discrepancy where the machine disagrees with itself. After the county clerks discovered all this, they, uh, they came to, to, to my group at Princeton and asked us if we'd do a study. Uh, they were going to give us access to documentation, to records of the election, to some of the voting machines that had trouble, and they wanted us to look into it and try to figure out, if we could, what the cause was of the problem and what the risk was for the future. Just before we were going to get these voting machines, um, I got an email from Sequoia, the voting machine vendor, and the county clerks apparently got a letter from Sequoia telling them that uh, for them to give us this information, for them to give us the, uh, for the county clerks to give us these machines would violate the county clerk's confidentiality agreement with Sequoia and would lead to, uh, to lawsuits and so on. And so in the face of all of this, uh, of this, of these legal threats, the county clerks decided uh, to, uh, to back off and, and not go ahead with the study. Is this a window into what's going on now with voting machine companies? You see a lot of this. You see a lot of this kind of secrecy. And it's very different from what we've seen in the past with the way votes have been counted. You would think that the counting of the votes and the precise methods, the precise algorithms or computer code that's used for counting the votes would be something that the public has an interest in. Most of the voting machine companies take the position that the precise means and methods that they use to count the votes um, should be secret because it's proprietary and developed by them. And unfortunately, um, a lot of state and county officials have signed contracts that, uh, that seem to give the companies the right to prevent that sort of transparency. One of the really good sources for uh, electronic voting information is uh, verifiedvoting.org. Um, this is a group that was founded by some computer scientists. So if you want to know what technology is going to be used in your polling place, if you want to know what the state of play is in your state, uh, moving into the next election. Um, that's a good place. Uh, that's a good place to go. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to wrap it up. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to say thanks again for coming on Y Tuesday. This is Ed Felton from Princeton University. Thanks very much. My pleasure.